You ever just look back at the year 2007 and go, Wow, that year was definitely a year. From iconic movies like The Game Plan featuring The Rock, as well as all of these amazing video games, especially you. But also, an underrated year for animation, specifically in the TV category. And some of them we will be covering in the near future, but one of those shows captured my interests originally when it aired, and it felt as if it faded into obscurity, or I took interest in other things at the time. Regardless of what that answer is, yeah, we're talking about El Tigre, The Adventures of Manny Rivera, or just El Tigre for short, but not shorter than that, E.T. is that thing over there. So join me on our special series, The Fault in Our Nicktoons. As we look back at the show, what happened to it, and find out why I, and maybe by extension you, barely remember El Tigre. Wow, that's like two of my series in one. You're welcome. Or, I'm sorry, you pick which answer works best for you. El Tigre, The Adventures of Manny Rivera was a Flash animated series on Nickelodeon. In fact, it was also the first Flash animated series on Nickelodeon. Set in the fictional crime-ridden Mexican-American metropolis of Miracle City, El Tigre follows Manny Rivera, a 13-year-old with the superpower alter ego El Tigre, as he tries to decide whether he should be a superhero or a supervillain. El Tigre aired on February 19th, 2007 to September 13th, 2008, for a total of 26 episodes. Manny, with his signature scar across his left eye, is an outgoing yet mischievous adolescent dealing clearly with more on his plate than he may have signed up for. Manny's father, Rodolfo Rivera, is a superhero known as White Pantera, who wants Manny to grow up and fight evil like he does. When the series starts, Rodolfo is a semi-retired hero, who still occasionally fights crime across the city, not being able to give up his superheroing ways quite yet. Rodolfo is heroic and noble, but is easily excited, occasionally childlike and still in love with his ex-wife, Maria, who yeah, he still flirts with whenever she's around. Rodolfo's powers come from his bronze boots of truth, which give him superhero speed, strength, and forces everyone who touches the boots to tell the truth. So if Rodolfo is the angel on Manny's shoulder, then his grandfather, Grandpappy Rivera, is the devil on the other side. Grandpappy Rivera is a supervillain known as Pumo Loco, who thinks Manny is better suited for the dark side. Despite being retired, Grandpappy Rivera much like his son, can't quite seem to shake off his past. He is seen occasionally still dipping his toes into supervillainy every once in a while by committing less severe acts of crime across the city. Grandpappy Rivera's life of villainy, though, doesn't stop him from being a dedicated father and grandfather, with the retired villain having a personal honor code where family comes before everything, even evil. This code leads to Grandpappy occasionally jumping in to help his son or grandson even when helping them clashes with his own personal vendettas. Grandpappy's powers come from his golden sombrero of chaos, which can transform into a robotic suit that can produce several different gadgets and weapons at will. Both men try to get Manny to come to their side of good or evil, leading to Manny having many anti-hero tendencies. Not quite good, not quite bad, but always entertaining. Now that's a tagline. El Tigre is up next. In Espanol, El Tigre al regreso. We hope you've been practicing your moves. Now back to El Tigre. Manny is the second hero in the El Tigre universe to operate under the name El Tigre. The first being his great, 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 great grandfather, a man who, much like Manny, could not decide whether he was a hero or a villain. This indecision eventually drove the original El Tigre crazy, causing him to develop split personalities, one good, and one evil. Manny's family fears that one day the same thing will happen to Manny, and that is the main reason both the grandfather and the father push Manny so hard to choose one side or the other. Manny's best friend in El Tigre is Frida Suarez, a tomboyish, outgoing, punk goth, engineering prodigy 12-year-old girl who, despite having no powers of her own, is always willing to get into mischief with Manny, a true ride or die. Manny's mother, Maria Rivera, appears occasionally in the series. She is caring and kind and dislikes the fact that Manny and Rodolfo are superheroes, of course, fearing for his safety. This fear was the main cause of her and Rodolfo's split years before. Maria moves back to Miracle City halfway through the series to be closer to Manny and become a school librarian, which is definitely an interesting angle to see how they were taking the parental figures in a Nickelodeon show. And it's also strongly implied that Maria might also still be in love with Rodolfo. Part of Maria's distaste for superheroing comes from her own time in college as the superheroine 
Plata Pelagrosa, the magic power gauntlet that gave Maria her powers often sent her into overdrive, to the point that her life was in danger. Manny's superhero persona, or fursona, or both. El Tigre is tiger themed well, after its name, with sharp retractable claws, super strength, and super jumping abilities. His power comes from the belt buckle he spins to access his superhero persona. Episode 14 of El Tigre, The Grave Escape, was the first single segmented episode in the series, with most of every episode being two 11 minute segments. In this episode, the Rivera family is preparing for Dia de los Muertos. Manny, who thinks Dia de los Muertos is a joke, eats the sacred offerings left for his ancestors when the rest of his family is not paying attention. Meanwhile, in the underworld, Sartana of the Dead has just found the seventh and final string to her guitar needed to resurrect the forgotten dead to destroy Miracle City. Sartana summons her undead army from their graves and forms them into one big giant monster. As Manny's father and grandfather confront Manny after eating the sacred offerings, they are attacked by Sartana's monster. The three fight the creature to little effect until Manny and Frida are swatted into a dark hole and Rodolfo and Grandpappy Rivera are captured by the creature. Manny and Frida travel down the dark cavern until they find a town of dead people. The pair realize that they are actually in the land of the dead. When Manny spies how poorly the fight on the surface is going through a portal, he decides to rally all of the dead Riveras of the underworld to go off and fight with him. At first, the dead Riveras refuse to help Manny, still bitter about him, you know, disrespectfully eating all their offerings, and also because the dead can't just interfere with the living. When Frida informs the dead Riveras that no one would remember them if Miracle City is destroyed, they decide to help out, at least as much as they can. But before they can go through with that, they have to get the original El Tigre, as he is the only Rivera with the power to travel to the land of the living. Guess we're just breaking rules now. Manny and Frida find the original El Tigre suffering from his multiple personalities, but are able to get through to him long enough for him to transport Frida, Manny, and the dead Riveras to the surface to then go and fight the monster. The Rivera's inability to work together as heroes and villains keeps them from defeating the monster until Manny is is able to rally them, making a speech about family and coming up with a plan to use the Rivera Super Macho Blitz, a move no Rivera has ever survived. The family is against using it, but as they all realize that this is the only way to save Miracle City, they all agree to the plan. Working together, hero and villain Riveras alike perform the Super Macho Blitz. Manny is barely able to hold himself together when suddenly he is able to access the El Tigre Tiger Spirit. Using its power and the encouragement of his family, Manny defeats Sartana and her her undead beast. The Rivera's party and the rest return to the land of the dead, with Manny having learned the lesson of why it's important to honor and respect your ancestors. I thoroughly enjoyed it, and for a matter of fact, I enjoyed a lot of this show. And through this rewatch, it was kind of like experiencing it all for the first time. The characters and the main premise of the show stuck in my brain, but a lot of these episodes, I could barely recall any of it. And while I don't think it offers much in the sense of something new we haven't seen before, I think the premise of following a young character trying to find himself, whether being a good or evil superpowered person, puts a unique spin on things, as well as the personality and culture poured in by the creators. We'll be right back with more El Tigre. Stick around, or you'll El miss it. Now back to El Tigre. It's gonna be El Awesome. Jorge Gutierrez is an animator, director, painter, writer, voice actor, and production designer. Basically a multi-talented animation threat, who is best known for directing and co-writing The Book of Life and Maya and the Three. Gutierrez's signature art style is apparent across all three works in both the character and set design. Gutierrez was born in Mexico City and raised in Tijuana. His love for Mexican pop and folk culture serves as the inspiration for many of his works. Sandra Equija is an animator, painter, sculptor, voice actor, illustrator, and character designer raised in Tijuana as well, who has worked with Netflix, Google, Sony Pictures, Disney, Nickelodeon, and various other esteemed companies over her career. Fun fact, Jorge and Sandra are actually married and a duo working together. With El Tigre, the animation here was fast and colorful, making every frame the show had in its runtime count. For some, this may just be too much happening at once on screen, and some may love that it never leaves you with a dull moment. While not in my top favorite Nicktoons, I truly appreciate the heart in this show from the creators behind it, and I have a soft spot for the visuals because they kind of remind me of the freeform look of Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. They even did something pretty cool with the show, almost along the line 
lines of choosing to save or kill Carmine in Gears of War 3? Yeah, you remember getting those Avatar shirts on your Xbox to help choose and support your decision? Now that's fan service. Or just lazy decision making from the creators. Either way, El Tigre did the same concept with the episode El Tigre's The Good, The Bad, and The Tigre. The second singular segment episode of the show. Now featuring Manny's Decision of Destiny. Nickelodeon, for an episode premiering that same day, gave fans the chance to vote on El Tigre's fate as either a superhero or a supervillain. I wonder if the voting ever mattered, and they would just decide for themselves under the illusion of fan interaction. Because if not, it would mean that they had two versions of this episode ready to swap out for air. Which could have been the case, and they could have had that ready, but, you know, who knows? But as is the case with many of Nicktoons, it seems Nickelodeon didn't have the faith in it. After an odd way to release the episodes, nearly rushing out everything they had left shortly after a several month break, it felt like they were just dumping out the rest of the show as to move on to other projects. In fact, for the last handful of episodes, Nickelodeon tossed the rest of them onto Nicktoons as within a little over a month, all that they had left had premiered there and thus the end of the series. Another sad, cruel fate, especially since the final few episodes episodes had been given the unusual airing times with little advertisement behind them, these last episodes would have been part of an overall season 2 of the show. But thanks to low viewership at 6.30am, that opportunity was taken away. The show's ratings fell, and the show was ultimately canned. Before the show was cancelled, plans for an El Tigre movie special were in the works. Unfortunately though, after the cancellation became finalized, those plans were scrapped. To make up for the lack of a movie, the cast and crew of El Tigre put their all into the final episode, no boots, no belt, no brero. I mean, the show was nominated for and won several awards, both Annie Awards and Daytime Emmys. So at least in some aspects, they were recognized. And later in 2011, all of the first season, plus the few season two episodes that came out, were put onto a DVD for a print-on-demand service through Amazon. At least Jorge and Sandra got to keep the El Tigre spirit alive through a brief cameo blanking you miss it moment from their feature film they made, 2014's Book of Life. Also with Maya in the three, there is references to both El Tigre and Book of Life. So it's really cool to see the property somewhat live on through the creator's work. But before before El Tigre was gone for good, you just knew there had to be some milking going on in the form of a video game. Aptly titled El Tigre The Adventures of Manny Rivera, very original, a Nintendo DS and PlayStation 2 version were released to pretty mixed reviews, with the PS2 version scoring some higher reviews than its DS counterpart. A Wii version of the game was planned, but thanks to the show being cancelled suddenly, the already short, budget cut ridden development cycle was axed as well. El Tigre does appear on the DS version of Nicktoon's Attack of the Toy Box, as well as a non-playable cameo in Nicktoon's MLB. But oh boy, why is Manny Rivera, El Tigre himself, not in Nicktoon's All-Star Brawl? Someone care to explain that? That just seems like a, a no-brainer. Hopefully, that can be rectified at some point with DLC. El Tigre was, in my opinion, a fun show that wore its personality on its sleeve. I can see why I barely remembered a lot of it, but in rediscovering it, I have found such a nice, pleasant placeholder in my brain to remember it more fondly now. So let me know your thoughts thoughts on the show, love it or not, favorite moments, episodes, all of the above in the comments. I appreciate you all hanging out with me for a bit today. Make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. Follow me on Twitter for updates on content and more. I'll be back soon with a new video, but until then, later.